So the big question that I always want to know and that I always ask myself when I watch videos like this and I know a lot of you I'm sure are wondering is what did this all cost? What does a haul out cost and what did all of the projects cost and what would they have cost had we not done them ourselves? So I'm going to break it all down for you and give you all of the deets. Last time aboard Freedom, we continued our stay here in the Seaview Boatyard, completing some final DIY projects including the replacement of the seals in our fin stabilizers and applying prop speed to both our main and wing engine propellers as well as the metal surfaces of the stabilizers. And for everyone who was so kindly worried about Sean's head after the big smackdown, ouch! He's doing just fine. In fact, he didn't shed a tear and didn't even utter one cursy word. He just got back to work as always. Now we're wrapping up our stay here in the yard, giving Freedom one final upgrade before launching her back into the water. Today, we're having the old green boot stripe replaced with a more modern looking gray stripe. With only two hours to go before launch, Prism Graphics got to work covering the old painted stripe with a new shiny vinyl stripe. Due to the color we selected, we had to go with a vinyl versus a painted stripe, which turned out great. The application went quickly and smoothly, about 90 minutes from start to finish, and it was super entertaining to watch. So Prism Graphics just wrapped up the striping on the boat and on the stack and it looks awesome. I'm super excited. Um, that was kind of Sean's big thing. He hated the green stripe. I was indifferent, but now I'm really happy we went with a much more modern, darker gray. So since we're all set, we are getting ready to splash back in the water and launch Freedom again. Uh, they're getting the lift all set for us. Um, they did say it's low tide and it's not ideal to drop during low tide. Um, it's just obviously you want, it just means they have to do more to the lift and go farther to splash you back in the water. But uh, I think in about 45 minutes, we'll get a little higher tide and we will get freedom back in the water. It's going to be so exciting and I can't wait to do laundry. <sighs> the laundry bag is getting quite heavy. Oh boy, they're coming. I didn't realize we're getting strapped up right now, but I guess we are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We are getting ready to launch. It's so stressful when they take those pallets out from underneath her. And she's just hanging. <laughs> Okay, I've got her in her harness and in her fleece. So, sweetie, you can't slip out that easily, okay? And Saul, kind of a trooper, you'll be good. I just don't want you slipping out, sweetie.
just like that, after five days and six hours, we're right back to where we started this journey, except this time we're headed in the right direction, launching back into the water where we belong. Unlike the haul out day, we all had a much easier and less stressful experience climbing back aboard Freedom. Start it, and I'm gonna go around and do some checks. I want to make sure the thruster works. And... Yep. Oh my god, I'm like a million degrees. Not because it's 90 outside, because I'm so nervous. But we made it. Sean's checking the thruster and the stabilizers and hopefully everything's good to go and we can back out and head back to our slip. Whew. This haul out, which is something we need to do every two to three years, couldn't have gone any smoother and was surprisingly a really great experience. Our DIY projects went well, the bottom paint and the stripe turned out great, and the boat didn't fall off the blocks or bust through the lift straps. A huge thank you to everyone who helped make sure Freedom was safe and sound during her stay in the boatyard. And we're good, signing off. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing our haul out experience and seeing all the work that we did up on the bottom of Freedom, uh, mainly all the work that Sean did to Freedom. Um, she's like a new woman. She's definitely like a new woman on the exterior and kind of um, a new woman on the interior. As you can see, we've also redone our ultra leather inside in our salon and pilot house. So we got rid of that ugly green inside as well, just like we got rid of the ugly green boot stripe um, that Sean really um, had a problem with on the, the hull of the boat. So the big question that I always want to know and that I always ask myself when I watch videos like this and I know a lot of you I'm sure are wondering is what did this all cost? What does a haul out cost and what did it, all of the projects cost and what would they have cost had we not done them ourselves? So I'm going to break it all down for you and give you all of the deets. So first off is just the haul out itself. Um, we went through Seaview Boatyard as you know and they have a haul out package. So their haul out package um, which was the haul out, pressure wash, prep, and then applying the two coats of bottom paint was $1,849. The paint itself that we bought through them and we needed five gallons of specifically Seahawk Biocop paint, that was $1,865. So, and they didn't really mark it up. It was the exact same price had we gone to Fisheries Supply here in Seattle to buy the paint 
versus buying it through them. So they didn't have um, a crazy markup on the paint. I don't think any, actually. Um, and the painting, the paint itself was $16 more than the whole, like, the labor and the haul out and all of that that combined. So the $18.49 for the haul out package, $18.65 just for the paint, the product itself. Um, they had to replace um, a few zincs for us. They had a very strict policy in the yard that they can be the only ones to remove and reinstall zincs slash anodes. So that was a la at their labor rate of $130. The next up was again, based on their labor rate, they had to do, um, we asked them to do some prep um, and applying a barrier coat to the bow thruster leg that Sean had installed. So we kind of at the last minute asked if they could do some um, some work on that, which came to $136.50 because it was a little over an hour's worth of work. So all in all for the haul out itself through Seaview Boatyard, we had $39.80.50 worth of labor and materials. We had um, a 3% shop supply charge at $119.42. We had environmental charges, of course, at $129. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's the cost of removing some of the, the metals, some of the anodes, I don't know. Um, and then sales tax. Uh, we have about, I think it's 10.1 here in Seattle. A uh, nice hefty sales tax at $433.46. So the total bill for Seaview was $4,662.38. See, it is a lot of money. $4,000 or almost $5,000 is a lot of money. In comparison to our haul out three years ago, this was $2,000 less and a much better experience and a much better location, much more convenient and a lot cleaner of a yard. So we were shocked when we got that final bill because we just knew something was going to show up on it or it was just going to be everything's always more than you kind of think even when you tack on um a, a buffer so we were pleasantly surprised only 46 62 38. okay what else did we spend money on so as you saw we applied prop speed and we were approved to do that um the great thing about seaview boatyard is that they did give us pre-approval to do some of the projects so everything you saw obviously was pre-approved by them to do ourselves there are some boat yards that will not let you work on the boat at all, probably for liability or insurance purposes. Um, so we were very happy to be able to do what we did in the yard. So with prop speed, we just had to buy the prop speed, which was about $600 um, for the two coats on everything. And it was a perfect amount for our boat, which is a 43 foot Nordhaven. So if you have a 43 foot Nordhaven out there and you're on their website trying to figure out which package is right, they have kind of like a small, medium, large kit um, can't recall exactly what it was, but it was about 600 bucks. Um, the bow thruster leg that Sean replaced was a thousand dollars approximately. So we bought that um, online. Um, he did all that work himself, as you saw. And then the stabilizer seal replacement that he did as well, that kit was about $400. And then there were miscellaneous costs to the tune of around 500 or so, give or take 10 or 20 bucks. Um, which was cleaning supplies, extra sandpaper for all this, the projects, um, and all the sanding wheels that Sean bought, um, or a sanding wheel, extra brushes, which we had to buy the day of for the prop speed application. And that was really it, just kind of those last minute things, and before you know it, they just add up really quickly to the tune of about 500 bucks. Um, then the other cost was the Prism Graphics Vinyl Stripe. That was $1,500. So that's definitely not a must-have. We didn't need to do that. It was just something we've always kind of talked about since we bought the boat. We never liked the green. I was a little indifferent. I was like, why would we spend $1,500 to change the color of the stripe? Um, it was Sean's big thing. So I guess early Christmas gift, maybe, for the next 10 years. <laughs> The grand total cost of this haul out was $8,662.38. We plan a haul out to happen for us every two years. This was a, th we were on the, th on year three. Actually, we went beyond three years. So we were, we were past due. Sean does do a really great job of cleaning the hull every few months. He dives the boat replaces the zincs, cleans the hull really good and checks up on things. So the hull looked pretty good, but you still need, the bottom paint does have a life, um, two to three years, maybe a little more depending on the climate, maybe a little less depending on the climate. Just for context, we budget $12,000 per haul out. Um, just, which is probably too much, we should probably go closer to 10. Um, this was close to nine. 
um, even less because we didn't need the prism graphic vinyl stripe but we plan $12,000 and we budget every month. We put that money away so that every two years when the haul out comes, we're not stuck with this crazy high bill because to get stuck paying $10,000 if you are not ready for it uh, would be kind of killer. So we budget for this and we put money away every month knowing that every two years approximately we will have this cost to incur. I don't know of any boats really that don't have to do this. Every boat we've ever owned, we've had to haul and have bottom paint applied. Um, smaller boats that we've owned like early, early on in our boating career, I guess, our boating life, um, it was a lot less expensive. Um, and the bottom paint obviously gets progressively more expensive as you move up in boat size. And then also if you have a sailboat with a keel or a larger vessel with just a larger hull shape, um, the prices all go up. Um, so just some stuff to note if you are planning to get into boating or you do have a boat and you're trying to figure out, you know, how much to budget. Now, a lot of folks have asked us how much we think we actually saved by doing so much of the work ourselves out, outside of the bottom paint, which we were not allowed to do ourselves. Some yards let you do it yourself. Given this price, though, I, it was worth it to have them do it and all the prep that they did and obviously the hauling. Um, but Sean, across the three days that he did the work, so he did um, almost a full day on that Friday that we um, hauled out, and then Saturday, Sunday, almost all of those days, he put in 25 hours of labor. So at their labor rate of $130 an hour, that would have cost an additional $3,250 had they done it and had they worked at the same pace. Sean's a machine. <laughs> he does things really quickly and kind of doesn't stop. He doesn't take breaks. He's just like very methodical and very much the type of person that when he starts something, he has to finish it, preferably that day, if not early the next morning. So he works a lot faster than I think most people would work. So factor in maybe 30, 35 hours had somebody else been doing the work, um, just because Sean works at just a kind of a crazy rate of speed. And I don't know how he has the energy, but he does. The other thing that was great about Seaview was that we were allowed to live aboard. Um, not all boatyards allow you to live aboard. So we saved hotel, a hotel fee, we saved hotel parking fees, and we saved hotel pet fees. So the average price of a hotel in Seattle around that time when I had looked was around $325, all in with all the hotel fees and everything. So I just went on Expedia and just did a look around our area, even into downtown. That was around the average. So five nights in a hotel would have been $1,625. Then the parking fee, um, they run anywhere from 35 to 40 bucks a night. I went with 37 because I, I went with one of the hotels that we probably would have stayed at had we not been allowed to live aboard. That was $37 a night times five nights, $185 just for parking. And then the hotel pet fee would have been $200 for little Sully and Martha. So just by doing the work ourselves and being able to live aboard, we saved ourselves $5,260, more than the cost of the actual haul out and paint. So pretty crazy. But when you factor in that we budget $12,000 every two years for this haul out, the whole haul out experience really for a lot of that extra comes from just my assumption that little things will pop up that we don't expect. And I always wanna have a cushion where possible. That 86 plus the five exceeds the 12,000. So right there, you never know if we're in a different location um, for the next haul out, which I'm sure we will be. We don't know if we'll be able to live aboard or where we'll have to live and all those extra costs incur. So might have to even up our budget for that for the next couple, two, three years, who knows. But there you have it. That is the full cost breakdown of our haul out. Boating isn't cheap. Nothing's cheap. Home ownership isn't cheap. Nothing's cheap. So my advice to anyone out there, if you're a boat owner or you're thinking of buying a boat, is just be really good with your budget. We are super good with our budget, which is what allowed us to buy Freedom in the first place and what allows us to, you know, enjoy her and travel a lot and, you know, not freak out too much about a lot of this stuff. Every little cost that we know we're going to incur, we have a monthly line item on our budget. We save and we put everything away and yeah, if we can't afford it, we don't do it. And if we can't save for it, we don't do it either. <laughs> Be a good saver, budget for all of this stuff, 
And again, that rule that's kind of loosely thrown around in the boating community that you should expect to pay about 10% of the boat value every year in maintenance slash other fees. And in the other, I also include moorage and insurance. We have really found that that is pretty accurate. 10%, so if you bought a boat for 100,000, 10% is 10,000. That's a very accurate assumption. And even if it's 500,000, that means it's 50,000 because your more your insurance is going to be higher. Your mortgage is going to be more expensive. The maintenance is going to be more. And before you know it over the course of 12 months, it's kind of easy to spend that kind of money. It's insane um, in some regards, but in some regards it's, you know, it's not. Um, for us, it's not so crazy. It's our home. We love it. So we don't have a house and a bunch of cars to worry about. So we put our money into bow thrusters and prop speed and, and everything else. Anywho, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Give us a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that little yellow notification bell so you'll always know when we upload a video. Um, coming up in a week or two, I can't make any promises, but we'll be sharing an update on our cruising plans. So you don't want to miss it. We'll see you later.